we are gonna solve some differential equations. Yeah, yeah. First order linear. Hey, today we're gonna talk about solving first order linear differential equations. Today I wanna go through how we solve them using the method of the integrating factor, it's sometimes called, and um, what's behind that method and why it works. So we'll go through a few examples and also talk about what first order and linear even means. Okay, first I wanna talk about how to recognize if a differential equation is a linear first order differential equation. Um, first order just means that the equation is only dealing with potentially y and its derivative, its first derivative, um, no higher order derivatives. So we don't have any second derivatives of y. And the linear part, um, I have some examples of differential equations here, some of which are linear, some of which are not. So I encourage you to try to figure out which ones are linear and which ones are nonlinear. Um, but just to remind you, we typically say that a differential equation is linear if it can be written in this form. So in this case, this is a first order because there's only a y prime and not a y double prime. It's linear if we don't have any functions on y. So we don't have like sine of y, we don't have y being squared, and we also don't have multiplication between y and its derivative. So if you could rewrite your differential equation in this way, um, for some functions, p and q, these are just any functions, um, then that's when we say it's linear. So we don't need it to be linear in x, but with respect to y and its derivatives, it needs to be linear. So going back to these examples, this first one here, this one is linear because we could move this y to the other side and then we'd have y prime or dy by dx minus y equals sine x and that would be in the standard form we call this that would be a legit linear first order differential equation the second one here though is it linear is it not it actually is linear for the same reason this one's already in standard form our p of x function here is e to the square root of x and that's okay we're allowed to have any functions of x but y prime and y are only being multiplied maybe by some functions of x. So in this case, our p of x would be e to the square root of x and our q of x would be arctan of x. Okay, this third one here, it's not linear because we have y, the square root of y. So that's what's making this one non-linear. And this last one here is also nonlinear because we have y prime being multiplied by y. So these two here are both not linear, or sometimes we call it nonlinear differential equations. So just to clarify what linear even means, hopefully this gave you a better idea. Um, and why we care about linear differential equations is because that they're really easy to solve, um, which makes us happy. So we can solve all first order linear differential equations using this method of integration factor that I'm going to show you. And that's great because now we can do physics and other sciences and um, get solutions to the problems that we have that we're trying to solve. Um, okay, but you might be like, uh, Jesse, how can we solve them? I want you to show me how to solve them and I will. I just wanna start with um, a simple example to to hopefully introduce you to the idea behind why the integrating factor works um, and then I'll go through the formulas later but I really want to motivate it first. So here's a differential equation x squared times the derivative of y plus 2x times y equals 1. So we're looking for functions y when I take the derivative, multiply by x squared, add that to um, my function times 2x, that should always equal 1. So we have this equation and we're trying to solve for y. And ideally, we would be able to just move everything to the other side of the equation and solve for y. But we can't do that here because we have y and its derivative. So you might be looking at this like, I don't know how to even think about this, there's a lot going on here, and that's valid, there is a lot going on here, but I just highlighted the x squared and the 2x because I want you to try to see a connection between them. Um, so if you're um, feeling adventurous, 
Maybe try to think of how we could rewrite this left-hand side in one term only. And I'm going to give you a hint. It involves a derivative with respect to x. You might notice that 2x is the derivative of x squared, right? And also y prime is the derivative of y. So you might be thinking, this kind of feels like product rule. Maybe I could find a way to rewrite the left-hand side using product rule. Um, and you might try a couple things, but the thing that works is x squared times y. So let's check this. If I want to take the derivative of x squared times y, I need to use the product rule. So I have to take the derivative of the first thing, which is x squared. Um, so that'll give me 2x times the second thing, no derivative, plus the first thing left alone, so x squared, times the derivative of the second thing, which is uh, dy by dx or y prime. So the left-hand side, I could rewrite the left-hand side of this differential equation as the derivative with respect to x of x squared y, and the right-hand side of my differential equation is 1. So now we've collapsed the left-hand side into one term, and our next aim is to try to solve for y, right? Because we're looking for which functions y make this equation true. Another time to pause and think, hmm, how might I solve for y in this equation? And there's actually a really clever thing which you can do, which is to integrate both sides of the equation with respect to x. So I can, I'm allowed to do this. I'm going to take the integral with respect to x on both sides of the equation. Just like how I can square both sides of an equation or multiply by some constant. And what we're left with when we look at the left-hand side, we're taking the integral with respect to x of a derivative with respect to x. And sometimes the integral is called the antiderivative. That's because it undoes the derivative. It's literally the inverse operation to taking a derivative. So on the left-hand side, the integral and the derivative cancel out. And what we're left with is just x squared y. On the right-hand side, the integral of 1 with respect to x is just x, and then we need some constant of integration, c. So now we're almost there. All we have to do is solve for y by dividing both sides by x squared. So y equals x plus c all divided by x squared. And now this is our general solution. This is our family of functions that will solve our differential equation. And like with any differential equation, when you get your general solution, feel free to go back to the original differential equation and plug this in. So take the derivative, multiply by x squared, add 2x times the original function, that should give you 1. Everything should cancel. Um, so what we've done is we undid the product rule, right? We went in the reverse order that we normally would to collapse those two terms on the left-hand side, and then we could integrate both sides of the equation and solve for y explicitly. So not all linear first-order differential equations are set up this nicely um, with the product rule all ready to go, but that's okay. Some really clever mathematicians have figured out a way to engineer any first-order linear differential equation into something that we can use the product rule with. That's what Leonard Euler and before him Bernoulli and maybe even before them Newton and Leibniz were already solving linear differential equations this way. This was in like 1600s, 1700s. Now we call it the method of integrating factor. The basic idea here is to make any first order linear differential equation similar to the example that I just showed um, to be able to solve them. So next I want to go through uh, an example that isn't as straightforward as the last one, where we're going to have to kind of um, engineer the product rule into existence to be able to solve the differential equation. And to do that, we'll need to use the integrating factor. Um, so here's our differential equation. It's e to the x times y prime minus 2e to the x times y equals 3. 
Um, the first thing we want to do is put our differential equation in standard form. And that means I just want a coefficient of 1 on my y prime term. So I don't want an e to the x out front. So to do this, all we have to do is divide by the coefficient that's on the y prime term. So in this case, that coefficient is e to the x. So I'm going to divide every term by e to the x, and I'll get y prime minus 2e to the x y divided by e to the x equals uh, 3 divided by e to the x. And so if we simplify this a little bit, actually um, the e to the x cancels on the second term here, and so we just have um, y prime minus 2y equals 3 over e to the x. And the next thing we have to do is multiply each term by the integrating factor alpha of x. So typically we use alpha of x, sometimes i of x is used. It's just the name that we're going to call um, the special function that will make the product rule exist, be able to help us solve our differential equation. So the uh, integrating factor is always going to be e to the integral of p of x dx, where p of x is the coefficient function when you're in standard form on the y term. So let me just write that out as well. Our p of x in this case is the coefficient on y, which is negative 2. And our q of x is uh, this function on the right side of the equal sign, which is 3 over x, uh, 3 over e to the x. So what we need to do is multiply each term by our integrating factor alpha of x, which is always e to the integral of p, and p in this case is minus 2, so e to the integral of minus 2 dx, and that's just um, e to the minus 2x. So we have our integrating factor. Now I'm going to uh, multiply every term by alpha of x. So I will have um, e to the minus 2x y prime and then minus 2 e to the minus 2x times y equals uh, 3 over e to the x times e to the minus 2x. So I've multiplied through by my integrating factor I'm just going to simplify a little bit um, this right hand side uh, 3 divided by e to the x times e to the minus 2x is the same thing as um, 3e to the minus 3x. Okay so this left hand side um, if you look at this closely enough we've got the same situation happening as we did with the other example. We've got the product rule already expanded. We've got some function times the derivative of y um, plus that function's derivative times y. And so this left hand side, I encourage you to check it for yourself, is just the derivative with respect to x of e to the minus 2x, our integrating factor, times y equals 3e to the minus 3x. Now, just like the other example, what we need to do is integrate this equation on both sides with respect to x. So I'm going to take the integral with respect to x on both sides. Um, and on the left hand side, the integral and the derivative actually cancel out, which is really nice. So we have e to the minus 2x times y on the left hand side and on the right hand side. And we take this integral, we'll get minus uh, e to the minus 3x plus c. The last thing to do, like before, is to divide through by e to the minus 2x, our integrating factor, so that we get y on its own. Um, so y equals minus e to the minus 3x plus c divided by our integrating factor, um, which is e to the minus 2x. Or you might want to write this with a positive exponent, it's up to you, um, times uh, minus e to the 3x. And you could simplify a bit more from here, but that's our general solution. And we did it using the method of integrating factor. We um, started with our differential equation in standard form, 
figured out what our um, coefficient function p was, found our integrating factor, multiplied our entire differential equation by the integrating factor, and integrated with respect to x and then solved for y. There is a bit of a shortcut way to do this. You might have been introduced to these general solutions um, from your teacher, but if you have, this is just to summarize, if you did this in general for um, any general linear first order differential equation, if it's in standard form, then the solution, the general solution y, is always given by 1 over your integrating factor times the integral of your integrating factor times q of x, that function on the right hand side of the equation, plus c where your integrating factor is e to the integral of p of x, which is your coefficient function on y. So that's the integrating method to solve first order linear differential equations. I really hope this was helpful, and if you have any questions, post them in the comments down below. Thanks so much for watching!